Welcome friends to the 2023 Volvo XC60 review. Let's first talk about what's new for the 2023 model year. They have simplified their trim levels. We now have the base core model and then we move up to the plus model which is what we are testing here. And the fully loaded model is going to be the ultimate trim level. With the ultimate trim you can option in the B6 power plant, which is the turbo and supercharged four cylinder engine. You can also option in the air suspension as well for an additional $1,800 with the ultimate trim only. The plus model is what I recommend to most families. I just think it's the best value. And another thing to keep in mind is with the core models and with the plus models, like you see here, we have the ability of getting either the bright theme or the dark theme. We have here the dark theme that essentially blacks out all the chrome trim, but if you like the chrome trim, then you go for the bright models, the bright theme, I'm sorry. We also have here the B5 power plant, so this is just the turbocharged 2 liter four-cylinder engine producing 247 horsepower, 258 pounds-feet of torque, made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. But this is the front-wheel drive model. I would personally recommend getting the all-wheel drive, not only for the better residual values, but also because it drives slightly better as well. And I'll talk more about that in the driving segment. But let's quickly talk about the exterior here. It's a very handsome looking vehicle. In fact, it looks more like a station wagon than it does an SUV. And I think some people might really like that. But comment below, let me know your thoughts regarding the looks of this XC60. This vehicle has been out since 2017, and honestly, uh, Volvo has done such an amazing job with the styling of their products. With this plus model with the dark theme, we have the 20-inch optional diamond cut wheels. But personally, I recommend getting the 19-inch wheels for the slightly better ride quality. And they also still look decent on this XC60 as well. And with that established, let's go ahead and let's transition over into this driving segment now. Okay, I mentioned in the beginning there, I recommend getting the all-wheel drive. And one of the reasons for that is because the front wheel drive models like you see here it tends to torque steer a little bit kind of wanders when you make uh, <laughs> slightly harder turns like that especially left hand turns or even right hand turns it doesn't really matter uh, when you kind of stomp on it when you try to make a quick maneuver it will tend to torque steer does that matter to most people i suppose not you know most people don't really drive it that hard it's just that it would be a more dignified driving experience with less wheel hop, less torque steer when you go with that all wheel drive. It's just calibrated so well and it's just worth the additional uh, price premium because it'll also make your vehicle slightly more desirable when you go to trade it in. And speaking of trading in, I have partnered with Auto Companion. He is a broker out in Washington DC and he is offering up to 10% off MSRP on literally every Volvo SUV. And if you are a Costco member, you can get an additional like $2,500 off when you also lease the vehicle. You're literally taking $7,500 off the MSRP. So if that sounds good to you and you're actually interested in buying this, I will talk more about him towards the end of this video. Let's talk about this engine now, this B5 power plant. Made it to this eight speed automatic. It shifts perfectly and smoothly. Part of that has to do with this 48 volt mild hybrid system that they have introduced for pretty much all the 2023 Volvos. With that slight electrification, your auto stop starts are really smooth. In fact, I just turn it on. It does not bother me at all. And also the downshifts are a lot smoother. It doesn't use any of the fuel to downshift. I really like what Volvo has done with the B5 power plant, but the B6 is amazing as well with the turbo slash supercharged two liter four cylinder. I tested that in the XC90 and that is a quick machine, but that's really not necessary here in the smaller Volvo. 
it's more necessary in the larger XC90. Here, I think most families will be happy with the B5. And also the fuel economy is very good here, 23 in the city, 30 on the highway, and you can genuinely meet those numbers. Uh, granted, that's with the front wheel drive. When you go with the all wheel drive, your MPG drops by one or two. Still respectable numbers. Engine is not a problem. It's quick both in the city and out on the highway. Okay, I, I was doing some really good speeds out on the highway. You can pass people out there and the high speed stability is also really good. In fact, this feels more planted at the higher speeds than the BMW X3 that I recently tested, just so you know. In general, what I like about these Volvo products is it feels a little bit more connected gives you more feedback through the steering and through the uh, the body slash chassis than even some of the BMWs, right? Like that X3 I mentioned, even though they tout themselves as the uh, ultimate driving machine, this feels more communicative to drive. And I would say the handling capability is pretty much identical to the X3 and the Audi Q5. The braking performance on this XC60 is also really good, but unlike some of the other Volvo products, they've kind of tone down the braking feel. It's not quite as grabby anymore. It's a little bit more natural and progressive, and I personally like that. It's a little bit more natural. And everything about this driving experience is natural, progressive, uh, no issues. There's nothing weird about it. But the biggest change I've noticed in 2023 is they have gotten rid of that annoying jostling effect that I experienced in the 2022 XC60. That was my biggest complaint with this product uh, last year when I tested it. That issue no longer exists here. What they did is they have tightened up the suspension. They didn't disclose this in the Volvo press media sites or anything. That's one of the key things that you have to keep in mind. Other journalists don't really talk about this because they'll literally get this vehicle in 2017 they will review it once and then they won't notice the incremental changes that the company makes year after year. For instance, if I did not drive this 2023 model, I would still have the same thoughts and opinions that I had last year when that would be incorrect because they have made a legitimate change here. It's an improvement. This no longer makes you car sick when you go over uneven bumps and terrains. So they've stiffened the suspension to get rid of that effect. However, when they stiffened up the suspension like this, it's led to a much harsher ride quality. Okay, that's the main con here. It's not a back shattering ride, but over certain types of bumps, the vehicle can feel a little bit more jittery. And that's why I believe going with the 19 inch wheels, same vehicle, just going with the 19s, can help to make this ride a little bit smoother. You can get air suspension on the ultimate trim level, but I really don't think that's worth the price because I did test out the air suspension on the XC90 and it was decent, but it wasn't like an earth shattering improvement by any means. So I would say save the money, save the complexity, go with the standard suspension, just get the smaller wheels and I think most people will be happy with it. Again, not a back braking ride quality. It is very smooth over 95% of the bumps and roads out there. I just want to let you know an equivalent X3 or Audi Q5 will handle the same as this while riding just a little bit better. That's the only thing I wanted to bring to your attention. Otherwise, this is a reasonably quiet machine, not too much wind noise even out on the highway. Uh, the, the tire noise, it's, it's kind of there, but overall, not too terrible. I would consider this a very refined package and the interior space of this XC60 really sets it apart from the competition. So let's go ahead and let's transition over into that interior space now. Okay, I'll just quickly cover this interior space since I already reviewed this vehicle last year. We have here the blonde interior. That's what uh, Volvo likes to call it. Very comfortable seats. I'm quite pleased with that. I like this uh, dual color effect with the steering wheel, you know, with the black outside and the white on the inside. Door panel. The doors feel nice and sturdy. When you open and close them, you got your two-way memory seats, one-touch automatic windows for all four windows. 
We have here the bass audio system, and you know what? It doesn't sound bad at all. I would, however, recommend getting the Harman Kardon for an additional $875. Bowers and Wilkins, that is available, but I don't recommend getting the Ultimate trim and the Bowers and Wilkins, not really necessary. Harman Kardon sounds amazing. We have this uh, interesting stop-start situation here. Kind of twist that and there you go. Do you have some gloss black here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it is what it is. You have your uh, two cup holders. Kind of slide this here. Looks really elegant with this wood paneling. You also have that same wood paneling here as well throughout the dash. Looks really incredible. Infotainment, got the nine inch screen here. This is what most people have an issue with because the climate control is totally baked into this screen here, along with your heated seats, heated steering wheel, etc. That's not so great. And many people like to say, oh, just use the, uh, the voice command system. But by the time you screw around with this and by the time it misinterprets your prompts, you might as well have just gone into the screen and did what you had to do, right? Also, these menus a little bit uh, cluttered here. You have to kind of go through it access your driving stuff it does respond quickly so that's good but it's just annoying to use when you're on the on the move overall i think most people can get used to it got your uh, cameras here we also have the 360 camera with this vehicle that's nice i mean safety is no issue with these uh, volvo products that's one of the main highlights here after all volvo literally made a name for themselves with safety and all the safety tech is standard like the blind spot monitoring rear cross traffic alert etc uh, this 360 camera comes with the plus trim level i believe in fact i'll just uh get that window sticker here for you good space in the glove box and of course these uh volvos that are all iihs top safety picks you can kind of a uh, screenshot this for yourself look through it $52,000 vehicle. And there you have it. Got some uh, steering wheel controls, fully digital gauge cluster here. You have some physical buttons down here for your volume and of course your uh, window defrosters, right? <laughs> they didn't make that digital. The Center armrest space, it's a little bit constricted. It's not the best, but fortunately the glove box was pretty good. One last thing to note, we do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it is not wireless. You, have to, you actually have to plug in your phone to utilize it. Uh, but this is that Google infotainment, so you have Google Maps already built in, along with some other Google apps. All right, let's check out the, uh, the rear seats here. Rear seating space, it is not terrible. Take a look at the seats. Seat quality and comfort continues in the back. I'm five foot 11. I don't have an issue getting in and out of this SUV. Uh, headroom, legroom, not a problem. Much like the BMW X3 I tested, this kind of plastic backing here is a little bit hard. So kind of digs into your shin if you're an adult something to watch out for you have a slight transmission hump here you have some vents in the back here but not in the middle and nothing to control your temperature in the back either but you do have some usb-c ports scoot in the middle give you a look at the interior there you go i mean you can't fit in the middle but it's definitely best for two adults in the back and we do have here the pano sunroof as well with this plus model so that's pretty cool Let's see here put this uh thing in the middle down Let's see what we have here got some cup holders really you know sturdy armrest here okay and that does not want to cooperate but that does not matter because the trunk space 
is really massive with this vehicle. You can also kick underneath, open up the trunk that way. There you go, that is a decent amount of space. And of course you can fold down the rear seats. We have a spare tire in the back, which is great to see. And there you go, very nice practical machine, almost like a station wagon, but um, it is an SUV, it does sit up a little bit higher. And that's everything I wanna cover with the interior space. Let's go ahead and let's conclude. Okay, concluding thoughts with this 2023 Volvo XC60. Overall, I am quite pleased with this product. It looks good both from the exterior and the interior. The safety is great, decent power plants, gets up and goes, no problem. I did say that the ride quality was a little bit stiff, but at least with this model year, they have gotten rid of that annoying jostling effect. And I would much rather have a stiffer ride than having that you know bobbing effect when you're going over uneven terrains this is much better big improvement i personally have no issues daily driving it and compared to some of the other vehicles in this class like the x3 the q5 this is a much better value proposition especially when you lease it and i did mention i partnered with auto companion he's a broker out in the washington dc area he can hook you up with pretty much any Volvo SUV. He can offer up to 10% off MSRP, and that's pretty much some of the best deals you're going to be able to find throughout the country, really. And when you tack on the additional incentives that you can qualify for, like Costco, uh, lease incentives, and if you already have a Volvo in your household, then you can also qualify for the loyalty discount as well. So that's like $7,500 or more in savings. And I think the lease rate on these Volvo XC60s, it's only like 3.5 or 3.7 percent so very reasonable interest on the leases of these vehicles and when i used auto companions free leasing calculator which i have linked below it was only like 630 dollars a month i think with a zero down no money down lease assuming you have perfect credit so if you want to work with auto companion this information will be down in the description box make sure to use my affiliate link in the description box when you go to sign up because there is a broker fee and you can get a discounted broker fee of 399 when you sign up with my link so it's imperative that you go in the description box and so he knows that you came from one of my videos and again you will have to pick up the vehicle at washington dc or you will have to have it shipped to you which you will have to pay for of course but hopefully this is a useful resource to you and when i priced out the xc90 that is literally 200 dollars a month more than this xc60 the xc90 is a better product but i think for most families you're better off saving the 200 dollars every month because the interest rates are also a little bit higher on the xc90 lease as well and that's not helping granted both of these volvo products are a better value compared to its competitors. XC60 leases out cheaper than the X3 and the Audi Q5, which Auto Companion does offer deals on BMW, Audi, and Lexus as well, not just Volvo, but the Volvo happens to be cheaper. Uh, the XC90, it's $200 cheaper per month than a BMW X5 or the Audi Q7. So it just depends on what you're looking for, but all things considered, Volvo is one of the better lease options as of June 2023. Leasing uh, numbers change every month, so use the free leasing calculator in the description box to keep up with the numbers in your region. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover regarding the XC60. If you want to support me and my channel personally, consider liking and subscribing if you found value and edification. You can also purchase my new merchandise like these hats. I'm quite pleased uh, with these main motor group hats that I have developed and I also have a bunch of uh, t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeves. I'm really pleased with the quality of this new company I partnered with. Their merchandise is much better than the Teespring stuff that most of the other uh, YouTubers use. So that established, I'll have my next video on the end screen here. Click on it and I will see you there.